Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's episode of Psych Central webinar series. We have an excellent presentation for you, loneliness versus being single. But before we get started, we want to do a couple of housekeeping notes. We cannot see you, so if you are watching in your pajamas, you are okay. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask during the presentation, but the presenter will not see them and I will moderate them when the presentation is over. So you can type in your questions whenever you want, but they won't be until the end. And here's Nancy. Hi, uh, I'm Nancy and we are doing loneliness versus being single. Okay, let's see. Oh, good. It works. So my name is Nancy Kalina Gomez Edelstein, and I have my name that way because uh, in South America, you use both your mother's and father's last name. So my father's last name is Gomez and my mother's last name is Edelstein. And it's pretty nice because it kind of shows the, the cultural impact that uh, my family has had on me um, to very different uh, cultures and 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 ancestors Spain and in Lithuania so <clears throat> anyway this is a new format for me and while I love talking to myself and I'm pretty entertaining when I do um, we might get through this first uh, PowerPoint in 15 minutes or I may drone on for you know 30 if you're lucky um, a little background um, I am a clinician. I've worked as a clinical director in New York and New Jersey and clinical supervisor. I've investigated uh, child abuse, um, I've been a caseworker. Um, what I do is uh, I'm, I'm a therapist, shrink, whatever you want to call me. Um, and I, I have worked um, the populations I've worked with in my career are, are uh, practically all of them. The prison population, I've worked with uh, gangs, uh, child abuse, <clears throat> excuse me, um, let's see, uh, people who have bipolar disorder, who have schizophrenia, um, sociopaths. Uh, I've worked with the triply diagnosed HIV population positive uh, substance abuse and mental illness. And um, I've worked with uh, the LGBTQ community. And uh, so I've been privileged to work with uh, many, many populations. Uh, and and uh, it's been precious to me to have them uh, uh, deposit their uh, their concerns or, or learn from them how uh, a mental illness progresses and how the mind bends to almost breaking point and how much it can recover. Um, I welcome questions at the end, which Gabe already told you. So let's see if this continues to work. Where's my little, okay, there it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, if you hear dogs, barking those are our dogs um, and I'll apologize for that um, the learning objectives are learning the difference between loneliness and single or quote-unquote being single which I'll address later and to reduce the anxiety and triggers that these words create um, and also the most important thing is to gain perspective about being single and uh, the tasks that uh, actually you have while you're single or if you've chosen the single life as a, um, as, as a, as a life choice. Okay, so let's go to definitions. Why don't I slow down? <laughs> or we'll be done in five minutes. Um, lonely or loneliness? Lonely or loneliness is a state of mind. And, and that says a lot because it means that you can change your mind. And, and like I said, I'll get into that later. But loneliness is a state of mind. Um, loneliness is an adjective. It's a, it's a description. 
Um, it describes a feeling of sadness stemming from isolation or abandonment or loss. It's an emotional response to those things. Um, and yes, you can be lonely in the presence of others. That's lonely in a crowd or lonely in a, in a relationship. Um, single and being single. Single is a marital status. Um, it's what the box that you check off on a form. Um, alone is different from lonely. Alone is also an adjective, and it describes a single person or object separate from others, not isolated, but one who is alone by oneself. Um, alone is a state of being. It's like, hi, do you have somebody there with you? No, I'm alone. Well, you've described your status. You're alone. Now, I think that uh, if you heard me uh, just a few seconds ago, um, when I said that I worked with people who have bipolar uh, disorder, who have schizophrenia, I did that quite on purpose. I try, I am mindful, especially in my work, with how I define people uh, and uh, people are not defined by their uh, mental illness or their physical illness or their, <clears throat> excuse me, um, their financial status. That is, um, that is a misnomer. Being single is a misnomer because if you look it up in the dictionary, you're not going to find your picture there. And if somebody says, so, uh, so uh, who are you? Uh, you don't say, I'm single. Uh, you say, I'm, well, I'm a, a, a lawyer. I, I like to uh, hang glide. I like to, uh, I'm creative. I'm, uh, you know, musical. I'm enthusiastic or I love to laugh. Those, that is who you are. And while you can't monitor every single thing you say, I want you to be start being mindful of that. Because when we say things, going back to the mental illness, when we say things like, he's bipolar, she's schizophrenic, that is inaccurate. You have that disorder. Or she's diabetic. No, she's not. She is a beautiful woman or a you know, handsome man, uh, a creative uh, individual, vibrant, uh, who contributes to the community. Uh, but you have diabetes. So I hope that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I, I, I don't have any feedback. So, <laughs> so I, I hope that you, you get what I'm trying to say here. I'm I'm on a path of empowerment. Um, when is it loneliness? Okay. Um, loss, separation, move away from home after a breakup. Uh, you're, you, you are isolated because you don't share the same views as a group you're associated with, like friends, your community, the culture. Um, you, so you're kind of put to one side. <clears throat> I live, actually, let me interrupt myself. I live um, for right now, uh, I'm in South America and I'm in, in Ecuador, in Quito, and that's 10,000 feet above sea level. So there's not much oxygen here. <laughs> but anyway, um, you tend to get uh, dry, uh, everything gets dry very quickly. So um, because of the lack of oxygen. So you'll, you'll forgive me if I keep clearing my throat and taking some water. Um, also, when, it is, when is it loneliness? When you're feeling, of course, abandoned. Now, that's loneliness, right? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, I chose this, an illustration, because... Um, this picture 
uh, really says a lot. It's, it's about, I feel, uh, a representation of loneliness, an empty chair, somebody who's missed, somebody who's not there anymore, uh, something that is missing. And this quote, <clears throat> which I think brings the word, the term loneliness up to a new level, rather than just the, the, the feeling of, of uh, missing somebody or, or, or losing somebody. You also want to take into account our uniqueness makes us special. It makes perception valuable, but it can also make us lonely. This loneliness is different from being alone. You can be lonely even surrounded by people. The feeling I'm talking about stems from the sense that we can never fully share the truth of who we are. I experienced this acutely at an early age. I think this, the statement, the words that stand out to me are that we can, the, the biggest loneliness, the most profound loneliness is that is not to be able to share the truth of who we are. And in order to do that, you have to find your truth. You have to find out who you are, uh, warts and all. And I'll get into a little bit more of that later. When does it mean single? You are not in a marriage or otherwise in a relationship with somebody else. You are living your life, working, having hobbies, interests, friends, volunteering, etc., without having a relationship, even if you want one. <clears throat> now, let me clarify. Am I saying that uh, that not, ha not being in a couple is the right thing to do? Absolutely not. Am I saying that it's wrong to want to be? In a, in a couple, part of a couple, a companion, a partner, significant other? No. Oh, that's nice. So apparently it's going to start thundering, um, <laughs> unless it's just confirmation from above about what I'm saying. Um, so, uh, you know, it's the difference between wanting to be a part of a couple, which is fantastic, uh, we are social beings after all, and needing to. Keep that in mind. Um, oh, this illustration about what uh, we just talked about uh, is that we find a crystal or a poppy beautiful means that we are less alone, that we are more deeply inserted into existence than the course of a single life would lead us to believe. So here, we're putting single life uh, on a more profound, uh, uh, giving it a more profound meaning. Here is this picture of this guy, and he is alone. Um, <clears throat> he could be single. He could not be. But let's... Uh, Let's say he is, and he's walking along, but he has his guitar. He's connected to something. He's connected to his music. And he's taking a walk uh, on, on uh, train tracks, which are hopefully deserted. And uh, he's connecting with his environment. And that, just like finding a crystal or a poppy that's beautiful, means that you are less alone. So I want to try and shape uh, and change the, the, the meaning, the, the, the common meaning of single and, uh, and, and really get, uh, uh, get you all to, to thinking about how empowered you really are, even if you're feeling lonely, which is a state of mind, as I said. Okay, this I could have divided up, but I didn't. Um, about single people, really? Um, so these are some of the things that uh, stereotypes and things that happen to single people. 
and uh, you might relate to them. Uh, because, I mean, what do you think about when you think of single people? A lot of people immediately leap to the lady in the 10 cats, or um, I love cats, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's different. Now, let's just go through this. Something must be wrong with you as a person because you're not a part of a couple. You must have failed. Um, uh, being shamed by media, articles, dating sites, commercials, TV shows, movies about not having a significant other. And it's done very subtly. Or being shamed by cultural norms. Like in, in South America, uh, in, in, you know, a long, long time ago, um, <clears throat> my cousins and I would visit here ever since I was two. I've come here every every year for two to three months because uh, my father worked at the Inter-American Development Bank uh, and uh, as an official, and, and he, uh, uh, um, he got home leave, the officials did, to their home of origin, country of origin. So we would visit different countries. It was a nice way to travel. So my cousins <clears throat> had, uh, I have 42 cousins, and, first cousins, and they, because my father came from a family of 12, but I digress, and they were all getting married at 17, and here I was 17, I wasn't getting married, and uh, on vacation, and uh, my mother, who's American, said, no, Nancy, you know, uh, I don't want you to be doing this. You uh, need your 20s to find yourself. Maybe along about 30, that might be a good idea. And lo and behold, that's what happened. And, and I appreciate her uh, enlightened view of, uh, you know, telling me that I was important enough to spend time on by myself. So there's family gatherings where usually the first question is, it's like, hi, Aunt Mary, how are you? Hi, honey, how have you been? Are you seeing anybody? Never mind that you might have received a raise. Even if you were, you know, introduced by or, or, or presented by your mother or father or whatever, hey, Aunt Mary, it's Nancy. You know, she just got a raise. She just won an award. Oh, that's great. So how about on the love front? It's like, <laughs> well, you know, I've gotten a raise, won an award, ran a marathon, started volunteering, uh, any of that, like, count. So hence the word, really. Um, <clears throat> and yes, I think I'm borrowing, borrowing from SNL. Um, also, um, wedding showers, baby showers, regular get together with friends who almost inevitably end up saying, you know, I know someone you might like, then we can all go out together. Like your status is um, somehow not uh, worthy to see in public. Um, alone. Um, also, you have romanticizing coupling by uh, the uh, media and, and so forth, by stigmatizing, however, on the backs of single people, by stigmatizing or stereotyping single people as self-centered or bitter. And uh, no. Um, so also, we celebrate milestones of married and engaged friends and family, but there isn't any true recognition of your milestones. Um, it's like being single uh, is something to be avoided at, at, all, uh, at all costs. And of course the tax laws, I mean, the deductions for married people are just, you know, just, it benefits, it's like, it, it's like the IRS is saying, just get married already. This sums it up really well. Now, 
when uh, in the movie, uh, and I reference movies a lot, when Harry met Sally, Sally had broken up with her boyfriend and she was having lunch with her two friends, one Carrie Fisher who played Marie and she Marie immediately got out her Rolodex and was offering different uh, candidates to Sally and she said, well, now maybe I'm not ready. And Marie says, all I'm saying is that somewhere out there is the man you're supposed to marry. And if you don't get him first, somebody else will. And you'll have to spend the rest of your life knowing that somebody else is married to your husband. So I thought that summed that up very well. Um, single people, really. Designing the type of life you want with what is most important for you sends the obligation to consider someone else's needs. Now that sounds pretty selfish, doesn't it? But it's a good kind of selfish. It's egocentric, but not egotistical. Um, you want to do that. Uh, you want to see what's most important for you, what um, works well for you, uh, and and that's good. Those are good things to know, and I'll get into that a bit more later. Also, having the opportunity to grow as a person at your own pace throughout your life or the time that you are not part of a couple. You really don't get to know who you are until you are comfortable being alone. And while you've seen that phrase a lot of times, I'm going to try to bring it home to you by using some um, examples. Um, there are people who are single by choice, living fulfilling lives. They just don't see the need to be coupled. They might have a relationship, but it might not be traditional. They might not. They just enjoy uh, being alone, not lonely, alone. And I put here, if you are not coupled, Maybe you can think about, start thinking about some things that you enjoy about it. Um, let me see. Now, you can be out and about and uh, maybe go to lunch and you turn around and you see a couple and they are enjoying themselves, enjoying each other's company. And you say, oh, yeah, that would be nice. There's nothing wrong with that. However, what, what's wrong is if you live and die for that company. Um, uh, oh, if I'm not uh, in a couple, I, you know, I just don't have an identity or I, I, I just don't feel whole, don't feel complete. Um, and uh, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to be a part of a couple. Okay, fears and singlehood. <clears throat> the fear of having to be alone with, that's right, yourself. Because we haven't gotten to know who that truly is. Remember, knowing your truth, secrets, warts and all, that's important. Fear of what might come up for us if we are not distracting ourselves. iPhone, iPad, laptop, Facebook, um, Match.com, everything. Um, and we sit, and instead we sit with the solitude. In a coffee shop, a garden, your room, what is going to come up? Where are those thoughts going to go? The fear of experiencing, therefore, uncomfortable, perhaps uncomfortable feelings. Your mind does just, I mean, it's just a whole beautiful staff in there, making sure that, that uh, your defense mechanisms are always on, do not let me feel uncomfortable, which is why we tend to distract ourselves, sometimes in unhealthy manners. 
uh, in an unhealthy manner, like uh, retail therapy. You know, you open all the packages and, you know, the pro your, your feelings are still there. It's just you feel empty. Uh, Self-medicating. Uh, doing anything uh, with the idea that you are solving or dealing with those problems when in reality you're stuffing them down and not getting to know yourself. And that's important. And I'll touch on that. <clears throat> Fear of others' opinions due to culture or family values. Now, I grew up in the United States. I spent a lot of time here in South America, and I have a, a beautiful family and very accomplished people, and I'm very proud of being Latina, half Latina, um, and yet, you know, I've heard, I mean, even from my grandmother, may she rest in peace, who died in 2015, she was 108, and she, you know, she had uh, 14 children, all of them did beautifully, uh, two died, they didn't do so well, so um, anyway, the, um, the 12 um, brothers and sisters um, were were uh, educated and um, productive, but I still got the um, the looks and in Spanish the questions and and don't you think you should be married and don't you think that um, you know uh, are, are you going to instead dedicate yourself to taking care of your parents or you know it was. A fear. It's it's a fear uh, in in this culture of of not uh, being married and 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 being a parent, and that's just the way this culture is. Um, and also family values, the family script that you were brought up with. If you were brought up in a large family, maybe uh, you decide that you want a smaller family, or you had enough and you don't want any family. You want a partner, but not children. Or you want to replicate what you grew up with. But singlehood, if you, um, there's always a fear of other people's opinions. Um, a fear of your mind leading you to reflect upon present and prior relationships, partners, friends, family, and the patterns that emerge. Um, that is really um important because you need to take responsibility for the things that happen in your life and change what is not working for example you say oh wow you know i don't know why i always choose or i don't know why mom always has to bring that up that's so disrespectful or i don't know what you have to uh, reflect about the patterns in your relationships and what makes you feel valued and make sure that that is something that happens. Oops. Oh, I don't know how to go back. Um, Gabe, do you know how to go back? Oh, wait a minute, here. Oh, good. I learned something. All right. So um, I, I uh, picked this picture because it looked like she was overwhelmed by the forest. And I, since we went through a big list of things that are thrown at, at single people, it kind, of, it kind of represented that. And the quote is from an article, awesome article on The Guardian by Sarah uh, Benincasa. And part of it, uh, a sentence that she wrote uh, said, I just knew I wasn't good enough to be alone. And she talks about her, her troubles and how she was depending on other people and, and very needy and, and she just didn't know how to be alone. And so she said, I just knew I wasn't good enough to be alone. 
And what I'm saying is that you want to feel good enough to be alone. It's okay to be alone. It's, it's not taboo. Okay, important tasks for single people. How about that? You have tasks as a single person. Oh, and I picked this picture because I didn't know what he was doing, but it looked uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It looked very challenging, climbing up these, I don't know what it is, wet giant bark with the, uh, with the water coming down. Uh, he wants to reach something, maybe reach the water, challenging himself. Uh, but it's about discovering yourself. It's, it's important in discovering your challenges, your limits, your beliefs, your likes, your dislikes, your comfort zone, and who you really are. You know why? Here's why. Because I always tell my clients, uh, and, and here's another movie, The Godfather Part Two. Michael Corleone says, you know, in this house, right here in this spot, my father taught me something very important. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And I tell them, but I'm telling you to keep your strengths close and your weaknesses closer. Why? Because it's easy to know that you are creative, you're good at drawing, you're good at playing the guitar, you're good at, at languages, you're good at this, that, and the other. That's, that's easy. It's a walk in the park. However, if you get to really get to know yourself, really face the, 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 uh, the secrets, the, the traumas, and what's behind that, then you are the one that has a hold of your weakness, your weaknesses. You are in control of that. And when those feelings come uh, from the traumas or whatever, you can handle it. And why is this important? Because otherwise you're left vulnerable to others, like narcissists who can smell a mile away uh, people who are vulnerable and do not uh, are scared or um, uh, just uh, available to manipulate. So you want to be able to know your truth, your stuff, so that you can set boundaries. And that is an important task for coupling, if that is your choice. Because otherwise, you're going to be coupling with someone who is who speaks to you, uh, but really speaks to your um, your challenges or your weaknesses. And then, you know, if you're lonely and you you are with someone to relieve those those uh, feelings, and and it'll be better. No, it's just two people, uh, two lonely people. Uh, who, you know, multiply the, the feel, those uh, unhealthy feelings. So you want to be able to, uh, to know who you are. Tasks during loneliness. Remember, I said loneliness is a state of mind. You want to avoid self-medicating, getting into relationships in an attempt to relieve the pain, Misery does love company, but it doesn't make for a healthy relationship. You want to lean into the feelings. Let them come and go like visitors. Um, a lot of times we feel that the feelings are going to overwhelm us if we allow them to come. And we think if we start crying over a loss, a breakup, or whatever, uh, it's just not going to end or we remember a trauma, or we're, we're working on, on our past issues, and we think if I focus on that, I'm just never going to stop crying. And, and that's, that's natural. But feelings want to be welcomed and acknowledged. 
and then you move on. It's like that meme or a saying I, I saw, you know, you can feel sad and, and, and angry and, and so on, but you don't have to unpack there in the, in the city of sadness. Uh, there's a saying that pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Continuing to dive deeper into the feelings of loneliness is creating a path to stagnation. This isn't a permanent state. Address the issues, especially if it's becoming chronic loneliness. Anything that's disrupting your ability to complete your daily tasks, like washing up, like feeding yourself, like sleeping, like going to work, um, meeting your obligations. You can address the issues via activities, uh, consultation with a trusted advisor or therapist in order to restore balance and perspective during this time. You don't have to see a therapist, but if it becomes chronic loneliness, that's a choice because you're not pulling yourself out of that. Loneliness and loss, like I said, the feelings surrounding that are going to come and go. And maybe you'll need to sit down and cry. Maybe you'll need to scream into a pillow. I've done that when I've been frustrated. Maybe you need to make some, uh, it sounds simplistic here, but it works. Uh, get into your pajamas and, and uh, make cookies and milk and you know, watch your favorite movie. But you do need to address, um, address it if you're drowning. Um, or get one of the workbooks uh, that say uh, about addressing um, anxiety or depression. And, and you, maybe you can try that before going to a therapist. The thing is, is to address it. Develop healthy ways to bring comfort to yourself, to express feelings, participate in activities such as volunteering. Now, volunteering is really important, and here's why. It can be being a, a, a listener, working at a shelter, at a soup kitchen, whatever. Why? Because it's noble? No. Because uh, that'll make you a good person? No. It's because it'll take the focus off of your feelings and align uh, the feelings with those who need comfort themselves. In this way, here's, here's a really good trick, uh, is that through helping somebody, you have to put your feelings aside, but you can relate to them because you have those feelings. And so you're forced to rise to the occasion to be present for them and automatically lift yourself up in the process. Am I saying that after you help somebody or spend an hour uh, volunteering, you're going to be skipping out and just singing to the rafters? No. But through this uh, this other person or this other uh, uh, organization, you will be um, depositing your feelings and the, those um, feelings of loneliness or, 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 or sadness, you will be depositing those and getting rid of those through helping somebody who's in the same situation. Um, you know, I had to do home visits in New Jersey, and I had a home visit uh, with someone who was just released from the psych, psychiatric ward, and, and it was a very, very intense situation, um, and, uh, and I was in the car, and I had parked the car, <clears throat> and this guy I was going out with calls me. And I had five minutes 
before I had to walk down the block, go up the stairs and knock on the door. And I, uh, he broke up with me. We hadn't been going out for a long time, but I, we were having a nice time. And he broke up with me. And I was in such shock. And I was like, oh, my God, now what am, what am I going to do? And I said, all right, or, or whatever, or really? Or, and I couldn't spend much time. And I, I just ended the conversation. I said, okay, all right, fine. And I thought, now what do I do? And I thought, can I cancel? I thought, I can't cancel. Um, so I got out of the car and I went down the block and I went up the steps and I knocked on the door. And we'll call her Susan. And she opens the door and she says, hi, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm not. And uh, I thought, I just can't listen to this intensity because it is a you know, quite a story of hers. And I thought, uh, and what happened to her and, and everything. And I'm thinking, I can't do this. And so I just sat there and I listened and I listened. And then I started getting into the session. And uh, after the hour was up, I said, okay, Susan, I'll see you uh, next week or a couple of days. Okay, bye-bye. And I'm walking down the stairs, and I felt better. Sure, I went home and I cried, but, you know, it took 80% of it, uh, the feeling, off of me. So that's my anecdote. Um, I chose this picture because of balance. And here is someone who is alone, but she is grounding herself. How is she doing that? She's in a yoga pose or a meditative pose and she feels the rocks beneath her her feet she smells the water she feels the breeze of um, the evening and she's centering herself and life is a balance of fear and overcoming it and maybe we fear those feelings but we can overcome it by addressing them so they don't swallow us up. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer. Okay, this, I think this is the last one. <laughs> what has it been, 10 minutes? Um, anyway, the importance of singlehood. I, I want you to know something very important. You have to know yourself, to thine own self be true, like Shakespeare said, and boundaries. Here's why. Um, you just can't give the keys to your car to anybody just because you can have them by your side if you're, you want to be part of a couple. Just like you investigate certain things before you buy them, you read up on the uh, internet what uh, all about the car, all about the house, whatever. Uh, you, you take inspectors to a house when you're going to buy it so they can make sure that they check everything and uh, you're not buying something that's going to fall apart. Um, it's important that you put that much uh, investment of time into yourself. Because then you're going to know who you are. And nobody, not even the best narcissist, can, you won't see them coming, but at least you will be spared um, hurt. Why? Because you're setting up a secure connection. Yes, that's another example. <laughs> um, I like analogies. Instead of putting yourself out there on a public connection for your Wi-Fi of life, you want to have a secure connection. You want to know who you are. You want to know all the ins and outs. And you want to be... Uh, I'm thinking of it in Spanish, pisando tierra firma, 
uh, you want to be uh, on firm ground. And I think that's the most important message of singlehood is that whether you choose that for life or you you would like eventually to be a part of a couple, that's fine. You still need to know yourself so you can have the healthiest of relationships, be it with a companion, a partner, or your friends, family. Um, I wanted to, I wrote something down. Oh, yeah. Here's another movie. Okay, so you complete me may have sounded awesome when Tom Cruise said it in Jerry Maguire, but the key to remember is to remember that we are already complete, perfectly imperfect. We can feed ourselves, dress, wash, work, laugh, cry. Some of us can write poetry, draw, play music. We are put together with everything we already need, faults and all. We don't need someone. You don't need to live and die for the next text message. And we all have felt that way. Whether we consider ourselves a badass or, you know, we are Jersey tough, like I like to think, um, no matter what, we have a heart and we feel. And sometimes we wear our heart on our sleeve. But if we take time to know ourselves and everything about ourselves, face those, those feelings, uh, learn to walk with them, be true, find your truth, and set boundaries, well, then you don't need someone we had someone that we needed, our primary caretaker or caretakers, whatever form that took when we were helpless. Now, we need to need ourselves. So that, that's it for me. Gabe, Gabe, I'm going to toss it over to you. Oh, wait, I think I have one more slide. Hold on. Oh, yeah. See, my first time. Okay. Uh, the other quote, which just reinforces what I said, is I would rather sit on a pumpkin and have it all to myself than be crowded on a velvet cushion. Maybe that's why you didn't say anything, Gabe, because you probably um, <laughs> were waiting for this uh, that I showed you the other day. Um, also, oh, um, I am finishing up uh, the designing, whatever, of my website and presence on social media. But I have a, um, a practice or business, if you want to call it, called Couch Issues. What's yours? Um, and there's an interesting story behind it, but that'll be for another time. If you're interested in working with me, my contact information is couchissues at gmail.com. Okay, now I'm done, Gabe. Hello, everyone. Yeah. How'd you do, Nancy? <laughs> I don't know. I had a good time. <laughs> well, it was fantastic. All right. If anybody has any questions, now's the time to type it in. You must have been very thorough. There's no questions currently waiting. So we'll give uh, it 30 seconds. And if no questions okay. pop up, we will head on out. Nancy, so information-couchissues at gmail.com. If anybody has questions that perhaps watching the video at a later date, uh, may they email you there? Sure, absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Are there any closing remarks? Um, no, this was quite interesting. I mean, I think I, I, I learned that I was really nervous. And like I told you, I've testified in court as an expert witness, <laughs> but this was so different. It was like, oh my goodness, what happened to me? Um, I just regressed. And, uh, but it, it was very enjoyable. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, I think I would do some things differently the next time. But, you know, I, I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are very, very glad to have you. It doesn't look like we have any questions, so we'll go ahead and close out. Thank you very okay. much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And again, if you have any questions uh, later on or if you're watching the video on YouTube, uh, her contact information is in this last slide right there. We will see everybody soon. Thank you.